Hello again everybody. So, I had a request the other day to do a video on um, buying motorcycle insurance uh, for beginners. So, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, this does also apply to car insurance because they're pretty much the same thing. The principle behind it is exactly the same. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, now, as a beginner rider or driver, um, you're obviously gonna be stung with pretty high insurance costs. Uh, the reason for this is obviously because of your inexperience. Um, even if you've been riding or driving off-road ever since you were four years old and can control the vehicle extremely well, the fact of the matter is, is you haven't been out on the road in amongst other road users. And it's the lack of experience in that that makes the difference. Uh, just because you really never know what they're going to do. So yeah, uh, if you are young, if you are a beginner driver or whatever, your insurance is not going to be overly cheap and I'm afraid there's not a massive amount you can do about it. There are things you can do to get the best possible deal and uh, we will go through those and I will also towards the end of the video um, just talk a little bit about modifications um, but yeah it unfortunately it's going to be expensive and it's one of those things because your insurance won't ever get cheaper really and so you've got experience and the only way to get experience is to buy insurance and get out on the road so it's one of those situations so anyway how do we go about getting it how do we get the best deal well by far the easiest thing to do is to go on the comparison sites obviously makes sense doesn't it now this doesn't always necessarily get you the cheapest possible option um, Sometimes, if you go directly to the insurers, you can get better deals. But the only problem with that is, in order to compare the different insurers, you would have to go to each individual one and fill out all your details every single time, and it can be quite time consuming. Um, on top of that, the price of insurance changes pretty much on a daily basis. So the amount of time it would take you to do that, by the time you finish going around them all, the price you got from the original one may have even changed. So it's not really that practical. So the best thing you can do is to utilize the comparison sites. Uh, for me personally, I find Compare the Market to be quite good. Um, but the thing is, is it kind of depends on you personally. So just because one comparison site gives me the best price doesn't mean it'll be the same for you. You might find that Go Compare gives you the best price. So I would recommend comparing the comparison sites. So go on them, fill in all your details, um, you know, get quotes from them, but then do the same thing for the various different comparison sites to get the best possible deal. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is, once you're on the comparison sites and you're filling in your details, what sort of options should you be clicking? What can you do to try and reduce your insurance premium while staying on the right side of the law, obviously? Well. Obviously, you need to be honest about most things, in fact everything, so, you know, put your actual address down, put your real name and everything else, it goes without saying really, but, you know, be honest. But when it comes to things like how much voluntary access to put down, and what type of cover to go for, these are the things that you can fiddle around with that can make a difference to your premium. So, for example, um, increasing the amount of voluntary access usually drops the price of the premium, um, but only to a point. So my brother did this the other day when he was looking for car insurance. He kept increasing the uh, voluntary access and it kept reducing the um, premiums, uh, but only to a point. So I think up to about 750 quid, it made a difference. Anything after that, it didn't make any difference at all. So you can fiddle with that and kind of find the point at which it makes it the cheapest. Um, another one is the type of cover. So very rarely is it ever worth bothering with just third party. I mean, not only does it really not cover you for anything at all, um, it also doesn't really make a difference to the premiums. Usually the cheapest is third party fire and theft notice I say usually because it's not always the case sometimes in some situations it can actually be cheaper to go fully comp 
So what you can do is you can fill in all your details, you can, you can pick a type of policy, like say you pick third party, um, you know, click to get the quotes, but then you can go back and change things, so you can change it to fully comp, see if it makes any difference, or change it to purely third party, and just fiddle with the settings and see what makes a difference. So that's that. Now the third thing you can do is to put someone on your policy as a named driver who has more experience on their license than you. So if you're going for a motorcycle, obviously they have to have a motorcycle license. Uh, if it's a car, obviously they have to have a car license. Um, usually one of your parents will do. Uh, and the funny thing is, is I mean, I'm nearly 30 now and I still have my mum on my insurance because believe it or not, even though I pay so little for my insurance anyway, it still makes it cheaper. So again, fiddle around with these things. You can add name drivers, take them away, try adding several, just keep fiddling with these things until it gets it to the lowest possible number. As I said at the beginning, it's if you're young and inexperienced, it's not going to make it cheap cheap. It's still going to be relatively expensive, but you can get the best possible deal that's available to you, if that makes sense. So then, there is one other thing you can do. Now, if, like myself, you're lucky enough to live in a house that has a garage, and if you live in an area that is, you know, has relatively low crime rates and everything else, your insurance is going to be a little bit cheaper anyway. Now, if you happen to live in an area with higher crime rates, and you don't have a garage, I'm sorry to say your insurance may be just a little bit higher. Now, I don't know how much higher because, again, it depends on personal circumstances, but it can make a difference. Now, what I'm going to say next, I don't necessarily condone, I don't, um, I'm not recommending you do this, I'm just saying it's something you could theoretically do and it might make a difference. Um, now, if you do decide to do this, I hold no responsibility for anything that does happen because if you do get caught, um, obviously your insurance is valid and that can get you in trouble. And also, if anything happens to your bike, you're not covered, you're going to lose out. So, with that bit said, one thing you could do is if you lived in an area that you didn't have a garage and the crime rate's a bit higher, but you had a parent or a friend who lived in a, a, a slightly safer area and does have a garage, theoretically you could tell the insurance company that you keep your bike or car there overnight. Now, in theory, again, you shouldn't really get caught out by this, because if you were to have an accident out on the road, they've got no way of telling where you keep your bike overnight. The only time this would potentially trip you up is if your bike got stolen or damaged at your property because obviously they're going to be asking questions. They're going to go, well, if it was locked in a garage, how did it get damaged, I don't know, five miles down the road while outside? So you see what I mean? I mean, you could, again, in theory, you could say you were staying around a friend's house, but I don't know, it's just a little bit dodgy. So, as I say, that may possibly reduce your insurance a tiny bit, but I don't recommend it. But it's up to you, you know, that's, I'll leave it to you guys whether you do that or not. But I personally don't recommend it. So anyway, they're all the things you can do to get the best possible deal on your insurance. There's really not a lot else. Unfortunately, you know, at the end of the day, you can only do so much. After that, you just have to kind of suck it up and pay it. Um, and I would, I would say definitely, definitely do get insurance. Don't be tempted to try and ride without it because firstly, the chances of you getting caught are quite high at the minute, especially now that they've got all the technology to catch you out. They don't even need to be out looking for you. There's cameras on bridges and things everywhere that can check your number plate and see if you're insured and everything. So it's just not worth the risk. Because if you do get caught, especially if you're a new driver, they will pull your pants down and, well, you can imagine. So don't don't be tempted to drive without insurance. It's, it's just not worth it. It really isn't. Um, but finally, let's just talk a little bit about modifications. Because if you're anything like me, you buy a motorcycle, the first thing you do is put a nice exhaust on it, right? Um, and again, with cars, if you modify them as well. 
always tell your insurance company. Um, now, you don't have to tell them if you've just put some stickers on your bike or whatever, but anything you do to your vehicle that changes it from the factory standard, tell, the, tell your insurance company, because nine times out of ten, unless it's a high performance mod that's going to dramatically increase the performance of the engine, it shouldn't really impact on your premium too much. Um, but what it does do is just cover you. So, say for instance you bought a bike and decided to spray it a different colour. Tell the insurance company. If you put a different exhaust on it, tell the insurance company. Nine times out of ten, as I say, especially with the exhausts, rather than increasing your premium, all they'll do is say, right, well that's fine, but if you have an accident, we will cover the bike, but we won't cover the exhaust because it's an aftermarket one. So you'll have to pay for a new one of those yourself. So, you know, it's, it's not very often they'll increase your premium for something like that. It's only if you, like, put a bigger engine in it or, you know, bought it out or did anything like that, then it'll make a difference. Um, so, yeah, like, just to cover yourself, always tell your insurance companies, because if you don't and you have an accident, even if you just sprayed it a different colour, if you have an accident and they come out and go, well, this isn't the bike we've got our insurance policy, because on our policy it says your bike's red and it's actually blue, this one. So, you know, that it, it's just to cover yourself is all it is. Um, because, again, another thing they might do is they might turn around and say, well, you know, your bike's blue, the one on our insurance policy is red, therefore the bike you're riding isn't covered, therefore, you know, you're going to get yourself in trouble in all sorts of different ways. So, yeah, I, I would definitely, definitely inform them of any modifications you do. And that's really about it. Um, I can't think off the top of my head of anything else that will help you guys out with regards to making the insurance any cheaper or any easier. It's, it is unfortunately one of those things. Insurance is expensive, but you have to have it. But hopefully, you guys found this little video useful. Uh, if you did, and if you did like it, please do give it a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. And for now, thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys again soon.